Right, so on to question three, our fourth out of five questions. A pair of narrow parallel slits is illuminated by monochromatic light of wavelength 500 nanometers to produce Young's fringes on the slit on the screen. We're given a diagram there. Light, so on the screen, Young's fringes, these are the cosine fringes that do that. And that central one there. Explain the difference and similarities between the interference bands produced by monochromatic on the double slit and on a diffraction grating of the same slit separation. So this is something I sort of touched on last one, last question. So this is 500 nanometers. So these are just two slits. Okay, and you get that one. So now if you do your diffraction grating on the same separation, what your screen looks like is now a series of very, very sharp peaks. And if they're infinitesimally thin slits, these peaks are all the same. In practice, they won't be, and you'll get a bit of a decay away because of the slit width. OK, differences and similarities. Um, so if we go similarities, so both have their peaks at the same place. Which is d sine theta equals n lambda. That governs the positions of the peaks. Um, I guess we could say both have interference. Um, differences um, for the grating has much sharper peaks so with the grating you get almost nothing unless you are at the peak as almost gives almost zero intensity unless you're at a peak. Whereas the double slit is quite variable. It has broad peaks. In fact, it's a cosine. I don't think there's anything wrong for just sticking that word in there. Um, now we're told to explain the differences and similarities. So really the key word is interference. Um, I think the diffraction grating is perhaps the easiest to understand. Um, so let's say we're, we've got light moving off at an angle theta. To get a peak, all of these have got to interfere constructively, um, which means that this distance here, or that distance there, or that distance there, these, because th look at those two waves, this one has got to move that little bit further than that one. That one's got to move that little bit further than that one to get to our position over there. And so that distance there has got to be a whole number of wavelengths. If it's not, then what you'll get is each of these gets progressively further and further out of phase. So we could say if, um, call that L, that length there. If L isn't equal to n lambda, each um, wave from a slit, or, or the waves from successive slits, 
think before you write. Get progressively out of phase. So what will happen is there will eventually come a point where a wave all the way up here is going to be 180 degrees out from that one. Those two will cancel, and then those two will cancel, those two will cancel, um, and you're not going to get anything. There is a slit that cancels. That's because waves are that's with interference uh, of the diffraction grating. For young slits, that doesn't happen because there are only two slits. Um, so young slits. So you don't get that destructive interference in quite so severely. Um, but the criteria for the maxima are still the same. Namely, that distance there, or there's our two slits, let's do that one in black. That distance there has got to be a whole number of wavelengths. It's the same criteria. So a couple of diagrams like that um, would do really well in that answer. Um, I don't actually give you much space there.